It's been 10 years since China rolled out an ambitious infrastructure and investment project stretching across the globe. The Belt and Road Initiative helped pave the way for the expansion of China's worldwide reach, while also offering a golden opportunity for lower-income countries. It all began in 2013 during a state visit to Kazakhstan. President Xi Jinping mentioned the need to establish a new trade route modeled after the original Silk Road. It laid the building blocks for his legacy project, a massive infrastructure development network designed to reroute global trade. But the path is not without resistance. Security threats and terror attacks, accusations of debt trap diplomacy and counter initiatives by the West. At today, the BRI spans three continents. It involves 147 countries, two thirds of the world's population and 40 percent of global GDP. At the Belt is a network of overland routes that serve as China's gateway across Central and South Asia, the Middle East and into Europe. While well, the road is made up of maritime lanes that connect the mainland to Southeast Asia, Africa and Europe. The running bill is estimated to be around $2 trillion, but the BRI is expected to carry a price tag of up to $8 trillion throughout its lifetime. The flagship project is the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. Now, the $65 billion injection is the largest Pakistan has ever seen and the biggest overseas investment China has ever made. It addressed Pakistan's infrastructure gaps, established special economic zones and expanded the Gwada port, which is strategically located along the Arabian Sea. It had been seen as a game changer for Pakistan. But last year, the country spiraled into its worst financial crisis in decades. And its ballooning loans from China are believed to have compounded the issue. In 2017, a China railway freight train carrying clothing and other retail goods made the first intercontinental journey from the eastern Chinese city of Yiwu to London. It covered 12,000 kilometers in 18 days, passing through Kazakhstan, Russia, Belarus, Poland, Germany, Belgium and France before finally entering Britain. It made London the 15th European city with direct rail links to China. It's faster than shipping and cleaner and cheaper than air transport. Now, this next project is crucial to China's position as the world's top energy consumer. The Central Asia gas pipeline expands the one established by the Soviet Union in the 1960s. It connects Turkmenistan to China's domestic grid, zigzagging across three other Central Asian nations. 55 billion cubic meters of gas flow through its pipes annually. And last year, the region supplied two-thirds of China's natural gas imports, while also powering Beijing's relationship with the nations there. And the same goes for other countries involved, in one way or another, with a Belt and Road Initiative. Now, analysts say it gave new legs to China's global political strategy, and it made the West just a little bit more uncomfortable. And now, 10 years on, observers say doubt shadows the viability of the effort once hailed by President Xi as the project of the century. Now, China's own economic growth is losing steam, and the pandemic's fallout remains. Lending has slumped and projects are stalled. Several partner countries are deep in debt, reflecting the cracks in the sustainability of Beijing's lending practices. The loss in momentum begging the question, what's ahead for Belt and Road?